Welcome. This is a video on how to write a pre-lab procedure and post-lab for general chemistry and above. Uh, this is what your lab notebook should look like. Um, my name is Eli. And I'm Nikki, and we both work at CAPS as chem bio tutors. We get a lot of questions about how to format pre-labs, so this will guide you through it. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. A pre-lab and procedure are both done before lab and will guide you through the experiment. The pre-lab has several different parts and we will go through those as well as how to format them. First, each page of your lab notebook has a blue heading section. This will need to be done on every page that you turn into your TA. It includes the experiment number, lab title, date, your name, your partner's name, your desk or locker number, you'll have a drawer, and your course and section number. Um, next, you have your hypothesis. Um, using information from the reading and video, you will describe specific techniques that will yield a desired result or product. Many TAs will count off points if the specific terms that you are using in the lab is not used in the hypothesis. So, let's say if you are using crystallization to purify your product. Your hypothesis should read something like, we are combining blank and blank to form an intermediate compound and then through crystallization our final product will be achieved. After this you have your equipment list. Here's where you'll write out the various things you will need to use to complete the experiment such as weigh boats, beakers, flasks, and so on. You'll find this information in your lab manual and also on the videos that you have on Blackboard. So this will just help you prepare before lab. Mm -hmm. Really, the more pieces of equipment that you think you're going to need, the more you should put in the equipment list. The next section is the chemical list. The chemicals you will use in this experiment are found in your lab manual. The table has many headings, so make sure to leave yourself enough space. You'll make a table as shown here. So the headings go as follows. Uh, you have the name of the compound you're using, the chemical formula, the molecular weight in grams per mole, melting point and boiling point, degrees Celsius or any other unit, density in grams per milliliter, hazards, which is a large section usually, so leave yourself as much space as possible for the hazards. Um, amount or concentration that you're going to use in the experiment. And the source which you found all of the information that you used. So to find this information, you will go to your search engine of choice and basically type in whatever chemical you're looking for and MSDS. This will give you all of this information. The one that will usually pop up is Science Lab. That's a good one, but another source would be Sigma Aldrich. Lastly, you have your pre-lab questions, which are found at the end of your lab manual, at the end of the experiment, and you just answer them in your notebook. Um, some people ask if you should write the question. That's entirely TA dependent, so make sure you ask your TA what their rules are on that. Also done before lab actually starts is the procedure. This information you will get from the lab manual and the videos found on Learn. This section is unique in the way it is formatted. Split the page in half and on the left side you will have your procedure where you will write step by step how you will complete the experiment. On the right side you have your observations. This is where you'll write down any important numbers such as measurements, or anything you notice about your experiment, such as a color change, gas bubbles, a temperature change, etc. You may also want to note any potential errors, like if you spilled something, make sure you note it just so that you can write about it later in your post lab. After you have completed your lab, you will write a post lab which has three main parts. First, the results section is where you will do any calculations relevant to your experiment and show important figures and numbers. The next part is the conclusion. This is where you'll summarize what happened during your procedure in lab. You write about whether your hypothesis was correct, were there any potential sources of error, 
And did your numbers make sense in your results section? Did you get a good yield? Lastly, you have your post-lab questions. These are also found at the end of the experiment in your lab manual. 